Hi, everybody. It's, it's Library Ann again, and I'm very excited that I'm going to continue reading Rabbi Rocket Power in Who Hogged the Hala a Shabbat Shebang by Rabbi Susan Abramson and Aaron Dvorkin and illustrated by Ariel DeOrio. Here we go. Chapter 7. Can't wait to see what happens next. The Wujus of Farblungit. In the blink of an eye, Rabbi Rocket Power was back, holding a very squirmy purr. She put her arm around Aaron, and the three of them shot up to the flat roof of the temple. As they snuck toward the back to see what was happening, Aaron's cell phone rang. It must be Dad with the information about the Trafinators, Rabbi Rocket Power exclaimed. Yeah, uh-huh, oh, really? I can't believe it, Aaron shouted into the phone. What, what, tell me what he's saying already, Rabbi Rocket Power urged impatiently. Some guy just told me we can get a subscription to Matzah Meals in a Minute magazine for just $29.99 a month, said Aaron, smiling happily. How many times do I have to tell you not to answer the phone unless you check the caller ID, she chided. The phone rang again, and this time it was Dad, and Aaron put him on speakerphone so they all could hear. According to my supercomputer, the Trafinators are an unreligious group of Wujus from the planet Farblungit, explained Dad. What, asked Rabbi Minch and Aaron? Legend has it that when the world was created, one planet spun out of control and started going in the opposite direction of all the other heavenly bodies. So it was named Farblungit, which is Yiddish for mixed up, Dad continued. Some nice pictures. Everybody there does the opposite of what we do on Earth. They walk backwards, they drive backwards, they stop at green lights and go on red lights. Their houses are upside down. They eat dinner for breakfast. They even grow down instead of growing up. But what does that have to do with werbles and trafernators, asked Aaron, bewildered. You mean Wujus and trafernators, Dad chuckled. The Wujus are the opposite of Jews. And trafernators are the most of unreligious of all the Wujus. Six days a week, they rest. And on the seventh day, which they call Tabash, they go wild. Every Friday, they get in their Fablun jets and travel as far away as possible to find a temple, which they call Elpmet, where they celebrate Tabash. Then they rearrange the letters in the temple's name to translate it into Farblungish. That's their language. They either say our words backwards, use Pig Latin, or speak Werbe, Werbe, which is the opposite of Hebrew. Go check the sign on the front of the temple. If the name is backwards, you'll know it's them. Hold on, said Aaron, and he raced across the roof and looked down the front of the building. Sure enough, the, temp the name Temple Shalom Emet now read Teme Molash Elpmet. That's them, all right, said Aaron, as he rejoined the others. But why are they putting ham in the Oneg Shabbat food and eating it before the service? The Trafinators are so opposite from Jews that they actually put ham in the food they eat on Tabash to make it reshok, reshok, the opposite of kosher. Then they do the reverse of what we do on Shabbat evening. First, they have their own egg Shabbat, which they call Geno Tabash. Then they change into their old clothes, get as dirty as possible, blow out the Shabbat candles, which they call Eldnax. Instead of a rabbi, they have an E.I. Bar, who is the laziest follower of them all. That's the craziest thing I ever heard of, exclaimed Rabbi Rocket Power. Tell someone who cares, yawned Purr. 
Can I go home now? I think I need a drink out of the potty. Purr, this is terrible, Aaron scolded. They put ham in all our food, and now they're going to blow out the candles that we just lit in front of everybody. Hey, Buster, maybe I should try some of that stuff, Purr suggested, licking her lips. I bet it's better than the yucky cat food you give me. We're in luck, Dad continued, ignoring her. I just finished my first dehamidifier, and I've been working on it ever since Mom told me about the trephinators. It can find pork product products in food and vaporize them. I figured it could not only save Onek Shabbats, but it could come in handy when Jews go to Chinese restaurants. It still has a few glitches, but we have no choice. I can bring it over to purify the food and put it back the way it was before the trephinators ate it. Thanks, Dad. That's amazing, Aaron exclaimed. Here's a picture of the trephinator. Chapter 8, Catulator Trephinator. Aaron and Purr knelt beside Rabbi Rocket Power along the back of the temple roof as they tried to figure out what the trephinators were saying. Time to yerp. Ab Gray, the maker's noise, one of them shouted, blowing a big horn. Oh no, whispered Aaron. One of them said that it's time to pray so they should grab some noisemakers. Purr, whispered Rabbi Rocket Power, Aaron and I can't go back into the temple smelling like bacon, so I'm going to zap you down there to talk to them. Just explain that they're welcome to join us, but we don't allow him in our temples, and that we light candles on Shabbat, and we don't make noise when we pray. What? If you think I'm going down there, you're off your rocket, rocker, Rocket Power, Purr protested. But no sooner had the words left her mouth than Rabbi Rocket Power tapped her with her mighty yod. And before Purr knew what was happening, she was behind the spaceship. Who wants Akon Bay? asked one of the trephinators, holding up a handful of bacon. Do I, do I, replied everyone. What the heck are you bubble brains talking about? meowed Purr in her usual shrill, squeaky voice. Was what at they? asked the trephinator, looking around. Oink, oink, you pigs, Purr screeched. Can't I stand that oyce, they winced another trephinator. You meatheads got any food on you? Purr whined. They oy, a trephinator cringed putting his bacon-filled hands up to his backwards ears. Yum, that looks tasty. Don't mind if I do. Purr jumped out of her hiding place, and she leaped up to bite into the bacon, but instead bit the trephinator's finger. Elpe yelled the trephinator, and Atke is me eating. Hey, this stuff is nice and greasy, just the way I like it, shouted Purr. She pounced on another trephinator, and tried to grab the bacon out of his hand, but missed and bit him on the leg. Picture those trephinators. Gavalt oi, he yelled, running through the temple parking lot, desperately trying to swat her away. Purr, stop this instant, shouted Rabbi Rocket Power. I asked you to talk to them, not eat them. What's happening? I can't see a thing, yelled Aaron as Purr chased the trephinators out of the parking lot. As he ran to the other side of the roof, he heard the trephinators screaming in front of the building. He caught a glimpse of them frantically running backwards down the street. Purr was right behind them, jumping up and trying to grab their food. I should have known that Purr couldn't explain anything to anyone without being an estpay, sighed Rabbi Rocket Power borrowing a trephinator phrase. Oy vey, up, up, and away, she shouted, shooting up into the air and pointing her yacht at the trephinator's spaceship. She zapped it with a lightning bolt, lifted it into the sky, and towed it down the street like it was a float in a parade. And that's the end of chapter eight. Next time, I will read you the rest of the book, chapters nine, 10, and 11, and I can't wait. 
So I hope you enjoyed Rabbi Rocket Power in Who Hog the Chala a Shabbat Shebang by Rabbi Susan Abramson and Aaron Dworkin. I hope that you're reading a lot of books or listening to a lot of books or having grown-ups read you a lot of books. And until next time, happy reading. I'm Librarian. Everybody take good care and be safe.